And that is how the lineal and WBC champion of the world announces that terms are agreed to for a two-fight series with Anthony and Joshua. And look who joins us here. Hello, Tyson Fury. How have you been? Hello, Joe Tessator. I've been absolutely fantastic. Well, I see the glow in your face in making that Instagram announcement that the AJ fight, the parameters are at least set for 2020. Why was it so important for you to get this done now this early and know the path you want to take towards having an undisputed heavyweight championship? I like to keep busy. Um, I like to know what's coming up in my future. A lot of people say it's a big mistake to book fights in advance, but I never overlook an opponent. I always train really hard, and I always dedicate to the fighter I'm about to fight, not someone I'm about to fight in the future. So I will never take Deontay Wilder lightly because um, I know what he holds in both hands, and I know how much damage he can do if he's given the opportunity. So I'm going to train really, really hard for Deontay Wilder. I'm going to put in a great performance, get him out the way, and then we, then we move on and they put Wilder to bed and we move on to Joshua. Listen, I, I know, and we both know, being in the business for a long time, that you, you're never quite at the finish line of having everything totally complete. There's negotiations. You mentioned the fight with Wilder. He has a fight against Pulev. There are concerns yeah. always with everything coming together. The way this works out, the way you understand it, it has to be a, a win against Wilder for then these terms to kick in, I assume? Well, I don't think there's any terms been reached, read the Joshua fight. I just think we've agreed, both fighters have agreed to fight in 2021, providing we come through our upcoming fights. So um, I've heard it all before, to be honest. Um, fights like this have been agreed before um, and then not materialised because one fighter's lost or whatever. I've been in this situation before and it didn't happen the last time I was in this situation. So I'm not even going to concentrate on, on that fight at all. I'm only concentrating on the bronze bomber. Um, and that's the fight that I've got next, whenever that's going to be, which we don't have any data or venue set. So I definitely can't look a year in advance when I can't see the future of this year. Well, we're, we've heard reports of late fall, early winter. We've heard reports of Macau, Australia, Vegas. When would you prefer it to be? Where would you prefer to have the Fury Wilder 3 fight? Well, I'd prefer it to be this Saturday coming, <laughs> and I'd prefer it to be in the home of the Gypsy King, Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you have concerns, uh, Tyson, in watching AJ and the way he obviously got beat by Ruiz in a shocking upset and then was extremely cautious and conservative, didn't exactly extend himself and look well-polished in regaining the belts against Ruiz. Do you have concerns that he could possibly lose to Pulev? Um, I think he's got two mandatories, actually. I've read in the paper today that both mandatories are saying that they want their fight. He's got the IBF mandatory in Kabrat Pulev, who's a tough uh, challenge for anybody. He's also a fellow top-ranked ESPN guy, a very tough guy, very good, well-schooled guy. And then he's also got Alexander Rusek, um, who's a slick southpaw boxer, who's a, who's a WBO mandatory. So by no shadow of imagination has um, he got any easy fights coming up, just like I have it myself with Deontay Wilder. So it's, um, it's a bit early to say anything is definitely guaranteed to happen because as we've seen in every way boxing before, Andy Ruiz was a standing opponent uh, two weeks' notice, and he ended up knocking um, Joshua out and spoiling the party and taking his undefeated record. So nothing's a guarantee, nothing's certain in life, especially not in boxing. Tyson, you're new normal now, and I said it to you just before we went on this interview. I mean, you're at the weight you were when you beat Wilder. This is your new norm to stay fit, to stay healthy and feel good. 275 pounds, you were right around that when you went into the ring at the MGM Grand back on February 22nd. I want to ask you this. How many times have you gone back and watched that fight since late February? I've watched that fight around about 10 times, actually all the way through from start to finish. But I've watched the highlights quite a lot because I like to examine the work that I've done um, in some fights. And I and in that fight, I wanted to see, I wanted to look at Wilder and see how he was coping with different things and different scenarios. And I've really broke it down over the last three months. Hence, I've had nothing to do. Um, and it was just every, every single 
part of it, I was just too good for him in every department, whether it was long range, inside, hooking, punching, hitting the body, anything. I just outmatched him. Um, and this is the difference in a match fit Tyson Fury who's kept busy and uh, Tyson Fury's had three years out the ring. So I'm going into the third fight even more focused than I will be for this fight because I know that this is Wilder's uh, last chance at the big time, especially winning his belt back. Um, and he'll come in with much more determination, much more focus, if that's even possible, then what Deontay Wilder will come in more prepared and more ready for this fight. So I have to take this fight even more serious than I did the first two because a lot of champions, a lot of fighters have had trilogies with people and just because they beat them comfortable the second time, overlooked them the third time and ends up getting knocked out or losing. And I don't want to be one of those statistics in, in time to come. Champ, final thing I want to discuss with you is what's currently going on in boxing. We are putting forth fights that are in fanless atmosphere. There are fighters who have had long layoffs. They want to get back to business. There were scheduled and postponed fights that we're trying to get back in what is a whole new world of how we're putting on televised boxing. You're in a completely different economic stratosphere, obviously, pulling in tens of millions of dollars. Reports that the AJ 2021 could be 60, 70 million dollars per fight. But for fighters right now, even some world champions, there's a willingness to fight in these fanless atmospheres and just get out there. What do you make of what's going on in the sport right now? Is it the opportunity for a great reset in the sport of fighters just willing to fight and fight often? I think so, yeah. I think it's very good for boxing, you know. After the three months layoff, if, if our sport can come back, even against an empty hall um, fight nights, the guys are still getting to do the fighting. They're keeping busy. They're getting back active. Probably some of the guys are fighting for the first time in the year. Um, it gives the fans something to tune into on ESPN and ESPN Plus, which is always great live sport, even if there's no fans in the crowd. For the fans at home, even me, like I've not watched any live sport since whenever it stopped. So I'm looking forward to the fight uh, that uh, Top Rank and ESPN are putting on. I know we've got eight shows coming up, and I'm going to try and uh, watch all of them because there's actually no live boxing. So we're, we're the only company in the world that are doing live boxing, which is absolutely fantastic, and I'm very proud to be a part of this company. Um, and as for the guys with the fights, the boxers, well, it's very important for them. Some of these guys are either early career, mid-career, or making a comeback, or actually world champions taking 10-round fights or whatever. Um, everybody needs to keep busy. They've all got bills to pay. Um, I think it's great what we're doing right now, but I cannot wait to get it back to um, capacity stadiums sold out like the Deontay Wilder last fight of myself. Um, and hopefully one day we get to sell out that uh, the new radio stadium in Las Vegas, the 45,000-seater. And I believe if there's anyone to sell it out, it will be the Gypsy King in his new home. Well, we would look forward to being ringside and televising that. Always great to visit, champ. Nice to be with you. You look great. And glad you and the family Thank you, are doing well. He is the WBC and lineal heavyweight champion of the world. And maybe with this pending new deal, a year from now, we will be introducing him as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Tyson Fury, be well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Good luck and God bless. And I'll see you all soon. Peace out.